Since there's a political purpose behind this uh, committee meeting we're having, I want to make a couple political comments. One of them would deal with the corporate tax that's been brought up here. Uh, we all know that a corporation is a legal document. It's made up of management. It's made up of stockholders. It's made up of employees. And the results of the corporation is uh, covered by uh, the, the consumers. So corporations don't pay taxes. It's coming out of the pockets of all these other people I just mentioned that are corporations. Corporations don't pay taxes. People pay taxes. And uh, you, you read about various aspects of this impact, but just one of them I'd like to note is the workers, when you increase taxes on corporations, about 50, 60 percent of the, of the uh, tax is going to come out of wages of workers. So uh, you got to look at it as a very anti-worker uh, approach to how you uh, look at the corporate tax rate. The second thing I'd like to make a political point on is I heard during the debate Tuesday night uh, Vice President Harris accusing uh, uh, Trump through his uh, increase in tariffs putting a sales tax on people. Uh, now, I don't agree with what uh, the impact of that tariff, but let's just assume she's right. It seems to me you ought to give greater attention to the sales tax effect on, uh, employ on uh, the consumers in America. We have a 20% inflation rate. That's a 20% sales tax. That's the most regressive tax that you can have uh, uh, on, on society as a whole. So we're here talking about progressivity, and we've accepted progressivity ever since World War II of the income tax. And I'm not here to argue against progressivity, but I think you got to look at the regressivity of the tax policies or the fiscal policies of this administration, the impact that it has had on inflation and that impact on every American very, very aggressive, or regressive. Now, I want to ask Mr. Brabant. Um, the Biden-Harris administration has consistently called for significant tax hikes on American small business owners. This includes increasing the top individual rate to 39.6, taxing capital gains as ordinary income, and increasing the net investment tax from 3.8 to 5 percent. Moreover, their budget proposals have assumed the expiration of the 20 percent small business tax deduction enacted in our 2017 bill. Can you discuss what this litany of new and expanded tax hikes would mean in terms of jobs and business investments for millions of small business owners that you represent, and all to tell us which one of these would be the most detrimental to family-run businesses. Sure. Uh, in terms of the impacts, a uh, recent survey, we just had our members asking them what would they do if taxes increased in 2026, which they could assume a number of these things you just listed would happen. Uh, about 66% they said they would increase prices. Uh, which you can imagine is going to be problematic with the current inflationary environment. And about 44% said they would cancel uh, or delay capital investments back into their businesses. So obviously it's going to have a drag on the growth of businesses and it's going to increase prices. In terms of the, the most detrimental to small businesses, uh, the 20% deduction, 20% uh, small business deduction going away would have the largest impact. Mr. Brabant, uh Harris recently proposed increasing the amount of startup costs a small business owner can expense to 50000 from 5000 While I'm not sure this proposal is, a, uh, is appreciated, wouldn't it benefit its benefits pale in comparison to those to be gained from extending the 20% small business deduction or bonus depreciation, uh, which was in the 2017 tax bill? 
Yes, I would agree. The, the small business deduction, again, 26 million small businesses took this in 2021. So there, there's nothing wrong with, with her proposal, but it affects a much smaller percentage of small businesses, and the small business deduction affects a significantly larger swath of small businesses, so it would have a larger impact on the small business sector in general. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank